Howdy, welcome to Pastor Chat. I'm Pastor Mark Sell. I'm Our Savior Lutheran Church, Fenton, Missouri, the pastor there. Yeah, that would be me. Today, with our short little uh, discussion in this Pastor Chat, we are continuing now with the Two Kingdom Theology Talk. And it is a wonderful treasure that we have in the Lutheran Church because it helps us understand order in the kingdom of the left and sin in the kingdom of the right. It helps us understand we're going to keep you in order and you're going to get a ticket if you don't. Or we're going to throw you in jail. And you're forced to be good. In the kingdom of the right, the forgiveness of sins that Christ gives us because those sins that have been identified and that brings us to this understanding of how do we live our life? How do we function? When you live under this realm of law in the kingdom of the left, so many things come up and you're stunned. You wonder how, how do we make decisions about that? Whether you want to call it morality or ethics, the more complicated life gets the more you don't really know what you're supposed to be doing sometimes. And you think, well, God's word is clear. I'm the Christian in the kingdom of the right. I know what the Ten Commandments are. Well, okay. Help me understand what goes on with the heart and the lungs when you've been suffering from cancer and you're 84 years old and you can't breathe, but they could put a breathing machine on you. Yeah, it gets real dicey. This is where pastors especially, we spend a lot of time dealing with sick people and end of life. And you're not going to find in God's word that by 11 o'clock at night or 2 o'clock in the morning, then we know what to do when the doctors or nurses are asking us questions. And dealing with that kind of treatment when everything else has shut down. And... Now you've got that machine forcing the lungs to fill up with air, and then it comes out, and you force it to fill up with air. Those kinds of things get awful hard. Those kinds of decisions are awful hard to make. Or someone who's younger. What college should you go to? <laughs> You're pretty much free what college you want to go to. Well, weigh up the pros and cons. You're using human reason to say, I want to go to that college. Well, what is God's will for what college you should go to? Guess what? It's not in the Bible. You get to make up your mind based upon human reason. Now, when you do that, though, as a Christian, you're bringing sin and God's mercy, forgiveness, from the king of the right into all of these decisions in life. Whether it's, what college do I go to? Whether it's, well, gee, can we as a family afford Lutheran High? Or will the public schools do? And have they been trained in their younger years enough because I've been a good, faithful parent taking kids to church, they understand forgiveness, and they've learned the catechism, they've been confirmed, and they come to the Lord's Supper all the time, so we're good. You're free to make decisions like that. That's the beauty that we understand. However complicated life is, when you're making decisions, of course you want to be moral, you want to be ethical. As someone who has worked for hospitals, and been an employee as a chaplain, and as someone who's worked with hospitals for 30 years now, plus, you realize how complicated life gets in there. And so many times you get to that point, we, don't, we're not, we didn't go to a medical school, so we can't, we can't parse and take apart all the stuff that's going on with grandma or grandpa right now, or my mom and dad. And sometimes you just got to start making decisions. And the second you make those decisions, now this is kingdom to the right. The Christian knows. All of these decisions I make, as Lutherans, we don't sit there and say, I know I'm going to make the perfect decision, and it's God's will. 
Well, not unless it's revealed in Scripture. If it's revealed in Scripture, then you stand on that truth of the Word of God. But, so many decisions in life, you don't know. And Lutherans will say, Oh, good for you, you made the right decision. Well, no, you want to do the right thing. That's the moral and ethical nature of the king of the left. But the Lutheran comes in and says, You know, every decision you make, what is the first thing you should do? Repent. Repent. We have a lot of seminary students that come through our Savior. We have two every year. And as they come through and they spend their three years at the seminary, and when they come, or two years, and then vicarage, and they come back for that fourth year, that's something that we really help them understand that you've got to bring repentance and forgiveness into everything. Because you are not going to be a pastor for the right reasons. How can that be? Oh, come on. You're making decisions because you're so holy and perfect? It's the beauty of being Lutheran that every decision we make, whether it's the guys coming to the seminary or teachers wanting to be Lutheran teachers or our, our people of God who are just being faithful and they help volunteer with things at church, Lutherans always understand because two-kingdom theology really is a way, finally, how we understand the distinction between law and gospel. That ugly guy I've talked about in, um, in these pastor chats. That ugly guy who brought us the distinction of law and gospel, C.F.W. Wather, so that you always distinguish between the two. Because in the end, when you compare yourself, I'm doing the right thing for society, I'm trying to love my neighbor, and I'm trying to love God, and I'm loving my parents and my family. Yeah, but were you holy and perfect when you were doing it? You see, that's why Lutherans realize, how do I make the right decision? You just do your best. Weigh up the pros and the cons and make the decision. And because you're Christian, the first thing you do is repent. Teachers, pastors, when we consider calls to other congregations... And there's always this pious thing that goes on. Well, I'm going to pray to God and that he'll lead me to make a decision. And Well, that way, when I make the decision, because I'm going to make another $15,000 a year, I could say, well, I prayed about it, so it's got to be right. Instead, the Lutheran pastor says, no, I was pretty selfish in all my decisions, and I repent, and I'm accepting the call. Or I'm turning the call down, because I need to be at this church. Where I think God wants me to still serve the sheep. But the beauty of it is, in two kingdom theology, you get to use your human reason, weigh up the pros and cons, and come to the conclusion that I have decided to stay at this church, or I have decided to take a call and move here, or move there. That's your decision. You're responsible for it. So what do I do now? Well, God called you through the congregation, so it's a divine call. So if I accept it, have I sinned? Yeah, of course you've sinned. You got three kids. Of course you sinned. You're wondering how you're going to afford. Ah, uh, see how it unfolds. What's my wife going to think? Well, oh, that church is the kid. Are they going to be able to afford us having kids in high school or college? All of these things. Lutherans, when we make decisions, we realize how many of those decisions are not in God's Word. So if you're coming out of our church here, and you hit that red light, and you say, I've got to turn right, or I've got to turn left. And it all depends where i got to go. What's God's will for turning right or left? You don't know. It's part of God's hidden will. That's most of how we live our lives, is in that hidden will, that sure, God has his will, but uh, he's given you the right to use your human reason, make a decision, and because you're a Christian, whew, my baptized, forgiven life, I'm sorry, Lord, I didn't see that truck coming. I'm sorry, Lord, I think I pulled out in front of that poor little old lady who didn't see me coming. Or, I'm sorry, Lord, I went the wrong way, and I'm supposed to go the other way to the hospital. You see how life and these two kingdoms end up functioning together? It's because we have to use our human reason, and even when it comes to the divine call, God calls through his church, and yet, 
you and I still have to make decisions. So we realize in all of our decisions in life, whether it's what school to go to, whether to turn right or left, whether to become a biology major, a chemistry major, eh, forget it, I'm going to nursing school. No, actually, I, I love working with wood, and I'm going to be a carpenter. No, I'm going to be a plumber. Those are all free, free decisions you get to make. But the Lutheran knows the second you make it, Repent of your sin. Because there's nothing we can do without understanding I'm going to be crushed by the Ten Commandments. And the only way to rise from that crushing that takes place when that law, the sin of God, bears down upon you is to trust in Jesus Christ. To rejoice in the forgiveness and mercy to run back to your baptism and let all your decisions be dealt with in baptism. Where we can repent. And it washes our sins away. And that then finally brings us to this understanding. Can people who are not Christian be good? You betcha. Yeah, they can be great actually. Can there be a great mother and a great father and they not be Christian? Of course, because mothers and fathers are about good order and loving your family. But what makes them Christian is the forgiveness. Can you make decisions about school, even though you sin? Well, you can make great decisions, but when you move them into the kingdom of the right, it's forgiveness that makes the difference. Because later on you get to school and it's like, oh my goodness, I'm not, not going to be a chemist. No way. I think I'm going to go be a teacher. So, what'd you do wrong? Heading into college. Well, you're just a normal college kid is the problem. And you can change your mind. And if, and if you do, it's no big deal. Well, so, did I not follow God's will? God has hidden that will from you. So, you get to make the decision and change your mind. Go ahead, change your major. Six or seven times if you want. Like I did. And so you end up understanding how much that forgiveness of sins comes into our life, and then it teaches us how to live our life mercifully. So you could be a good mother, a good father, a good neighbor, a good son, a good daughter, and reject Jesus Christ completely, or even be an atheist. You could really do that very well in the kingdom of the left. Just don't get in trouble and thrown in jail and don't get caught. In the key of the right, we realize, no, there's only one way to be good in God's eyes. To be following the will of God. And that's through repentance and forgiveness. And now in forgiveness, I can go back and keep trying to love my neighbor. And every time I try to love my neighbor, rejoice that God has forgiven you for that. It's really an incredible thing. And then next time... I'll give a very simple example how that forgiveness of sins, that grace of God for the believer makes a difference for the person who's doing something as simple as go cut your neighbor's grass for him. Well, thanks for listening and being here. That's Pastor Chat as I continue to work through the two kingdom theology and how they work together. Lord's blessings and his peace be with you throughout this Easter season.